Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the artist sessions. I'm Janice Cotter, the gallery manager at Como Arts. Uh, as we get started this evening, I would like to express my gratitude to the board of directors at Como Arts and uh, to the uh, government of Canada, the uh, province of British Columbia, and the city of Port Moody for their amazing financial support of Pomo Arts. Each year, Pomo Arts awards two emerging artists the Quiem Choi Exhibition Scholarship. This evening, you'll meet the second 2020 recipient of the award. Established in 2007, the Quiem Choi Scholarship is an, an annual award given to two BC artists. In the spirit of the late Port Moody artist, Quiam Choi's experimental practice and his artistic mentorship, an endowment fund was established to provide support to emerging artists by covering the costs of mounting a solo exhibition at the Port Moody Arts Center as an integral part component of their expanding artistic careers. The 2021 call for proposals on the Quiam Choi Exhibition Scholarship is open now on Pomo Arts Artist Call page. Now I'd like to introduce you to Gina Luke. She is joining us online to talk about her art practice and the development of pieces in her exhibition, Treading Lightly. Hi Janice, thank you for having me. Hi, <laughs> just give me a second. I'm just going to say uh, a couple of words about you, Gina, and then I'll pass it over to you. Um, so uh, she, Gina's joining us online to talk to us about her exhibition, Treading Lightly. And if you have questions for her, you can post them in the Facebook comments and she'll answer them at the end of her artist talk. Her animation, Metallic, is playing in the atrium at Pomo Arts, and you can find all of her Treading Lightly exhibition on, the, uh, on her digital gallery on the Pomo Arts website. Gina is a, a multidisciplinary artist from Victoria whose practice explores the integration of drawing with sculptural and texturized video installation. For this exhibition, she created a virtual space that acts as, an, as a new way to preserve and interpret our, unusual, our usual surroundings under different light. Welcome, Gina. Thank you for joining us on this lovely summer evening. I'm sorry, I quit the uh, share screen before I was going to scroll through your digital gallery just briefly and I hit the wrong button and didn't share it. But people can go to our website to see the, the uh, digital exhibition in its, in its full glory. Um, so I am looking forward to hearing about uh, what you're going to talk to us tonight, and I am going to pass this to you. Thank you. Thank you, Janice, and thank you for having me. Um, so I'm going to move right into my talk. Um, I'm just going to get these slides ready here to share with everybody. Um, so today I'm going to be giving a talk on the exhibition Treading Lightly. Um, this exhibition was centered on the intersections of the digital and the natural world. And in this talk, I'm going to talk about more generally about my practice um, and how I've been working with mediums that are oppositionally based in the virtual and transparent side versus the tactile and the real. So by that, I mean, in my practice, I work lots with drawing, which is very tactile, and lots which, with video, which is kind of more of a virtual um, medium. So I'm going to talk about how, as I began to make works that explored these intersections, I more generally also began to make works that explored the natural and the digital realms. So I'll go over over this transition in my practice from experimenting with these mediums to growing larger concepts 
um, the experimentation between the mediums of drawing and video, and the resulting research into the physical and the virtual, as well as the natural and digital intersections. And I'll be discussing this through a series of studio works. Some of these studio works are focused um, and they are in the online exhibition for the POMO Center. And then there are others that um, will just give more context to my practice and help me better explain these works. Um, having this event as an online talk rather than an in-person exhibition is something that's new in my practice. Normally, as an installation artist, I would have been at the Port Moody Arts Centre and I would have installed this work in person and reinvented the scaling to be site-specific um, for the space there. Due to the disruptions of COVID-19, this amount of planning wasn't possible. Um, so luckily with the help of the Port Moody staff, I've been able to adapt this online exhibition and make it into an online artist talk. Um, and before moving into the talk, I would also like to thank the staff and the board of the Pomo Art Centre for selecting me to be a recipient of the Quiam Choi Scholarship. Um, and accommodating this exhibition as a digital rendition, um, because that was a new venture for me also. So moving forward with my talk, um, I'd firstly like to discuss some influences that I was really interested in my undergrad that made me want to amalgamate the mediums of a multidisciplinary practice that is very split between drawing and video. So the animators that I was interested in were mixing drawing, video, and evidence of their own hand in their work, so lots of mark making, um, as an aesthetic punctuation. So this first animator, William Kentridge, this is a still from one of his animations titled Felix in Exile. It's from 1999. It's a bit blurry because um, that's how the animation really is, and it's also done in charcoal. So when looking at animation, normally you might think somebody would draw on a page, photograph it, and then draw on their next page, do their next frame, photograph it, and then put it together digitally to create something that was seamless. But what was interesting about this animator to me was that normally, rather than taking a page and taking a new page, he would just continue on his same piece of paper and he would erase in between his successive drawings. So you can see evidence of his last drawing in every frame. So if you look at these slides here, you can see this paper, it's forward in space. And then as it leaves a couple seconds later, you can see this really lovely trail that's left behind. So this was interesting to me, the way he was scrubbing off charcoal because it spoke back to his process outside the illusion of the animation. It was not seamless and it showed his performance of drawing. So this person who was physically holding and working that to me is a tactile act and it breaks up the digital attitude of this overall scene. Um, so I was curious about the analog and the virtual tension in his works and how he used this tension to create such aesthetic interest. So for me as someone who wanted to blend drawing and video without having them dissolve one another and be entirely seamless, I took cues from him and started to put similar um, experimentation into my own work. So this first work of mine that I'll show is titled Hey Baby. This is a dual walled installation of a scene. So by dual walled, I mean there's a projection here on this exterior wall, and there's also a projection resting on the interior side. I would classify this work as a genre drawing. A genre drawing is typically of metropolitan space. It focuses on people and there's lots and lots of movement. So it's very dynamic and it's never finalized. Um, similarly, I wanted to take that aspect of genre drawing of it never really being finalized and add that component to this composition. So I installed this work at the end of a hallway. Um, so when people turned a corner, their shadow was immediately caught in the projector light and then their shape would be kind of thrown onto the image at the right scale. So you can see that this shadow here is part of an actual person who was just walking down the hallway and then would have been confronted by this work. So that was something I wanted to do because it also activated both the analog and the digital space. 
And in this work, I was trying to collage a lot of digital textures and a lot of drawn textures to work in harmony with one another. So I have uh, smoke, which is entirely digitally made. Um, I have YouTube videos resting behind this kind of fake doorway in the image. Um, and then there's lots of drawings. Some of them are incredibly detailed and dense with line texture like this one here, whereas others are just an outer contour and kind of focus on negative space. So even in the drawing side, I was trying to mix a variety of things together. This was also the first time I used drawing to kind of change the architecture of space. So by that, I mean this illusionary image on either side of the wall kind of changed your sense of depth. But also you can see the steam in the image on this upper right hand side beside the figure would flow up and get caught beneath this awning. So I was trying to use the architecture of space and trying to manipulate it through my drawings and digital collages. Um, at this point, drawing, as I was saying, is very analog in my practice. It was something I was doing by hand. I didn't draw any of these digitally or in Photoshop. They're all on like glassine with charcoal and pencil and paper. Um, so here's an example of some of the drawings that actually went into this. These are kind of background figures. Um, and uh, what happened was I wanted to take the animation and let it run for 10 hours. So I actually had to compress it. And when I compressed it, what ended up happening, and it was unexpected, was that these collaged edges that you can see kind of around these forms, they weren't in the file, but then all of a sudden they reappeared. So in this final product, I had this kind of visual representation of these cuts I had made by hand, and it was an unexpected effect. And it also kind of spoke back to the Kentridge piece that I was interested in as it added a punctuation of my hand back into the work. Um, so you can see the figure on the right here, that would have been before I compressed it and the figure on the left, he kind of showed up with all of his paper edges again. Um, so in this next work, Home, this is a series of digital portraits. Um, these are animations that are projected onto shaped panels and they contain small personal memories. Um, so this is a work that I would have shown in the Port Moody Art Center and it's available online um, on the online exhibition. And these were based off of uh, figure drawings. So this is the shorthand of how I would draw people and this is a figure drawing to me. Um, in this installation, I wanted to experiment between the compatibility of this drawing that I was very interested in and video without having them entirely dissolve one another and be seamless. So I saw a lot of movement in this gestural sketch. Um, I could tell where I had pressed harder and faster around the corners and then kind of eased off. So even in drawing it, I could see the ebb and flow motion that I was looking for. So I took this inertia and I translated this particular type of motion into the piece, which was very lifelike and organic. And it kind of added an autonomous quality to these forms as, um, well, these are photos, but in the actual installation, this imagery spins in this very cyclical manner. Um, so this gesture of the performative drawing kind of activated the form of movement that ended up in this work. Um, so I was looking at how these two mediums dissolved one another, but also acted independently in the installation. And what was most interesting for me was I really saw my drawing in real space. So this sketch pixel for pixel is exactly what you're seeing blown up. So each part of each line that I drew by hand is what's dictating the shape of this form. So rather than the past piece, Hey Baby, where it's a collage of a variety of textures. In home, they're more stacked on top of each other and they're more merged. So I was looking further and you can tell in merging the mediums and looking at the experimental space that existed in merging these two. Um, so at this point, I was very interested in video as a transparent medium and it was an easy way for me to create illusionary spaces. In the case of Hey Baby, um, the architecture was changed. That was the last one I showed where the smoke was blowing underneath the awning um, and there were figures on either side of a wall. In this case of home, uh, the textures are kind of the illusionary part where they feel so detailed they could almost feel real when you're looking at them. 
So one of the textures that's spinning through this work is actually water, it's ebbing and flowing. And these are quite large. So when you're standing in front of them, you know, they're going to be at least eight feet tall in front of you. Um, so when you look at this plane of water, you might feel as though you're submerged or you're at least experiencing these textures in real space. Um, so I was thinking of using video at this point to create a virtual representation of something that was believable. And I was interested in how it was illusionary. Whereas this kind of other side of my practice drawing was tactile to me and totally rooted me in the analog. And the tension in these interests as I was using them was you know, consequently redirecting me to explore these convergences between um, the virtual and the analog, just because of the attributes and the nature of these mediums. Um, so this next work kind of speaks more closely to that transition, it might be a better example. Uh, this is biodiversity symbols. So in this piece, you can see elements of the virtual and the analog and also tensions in the digital and the natural. So this work um, started with a series of taxonomic drawings. So taxonomic drawings are things that you could find in outdoor field guides. They're scientific drawings of plants. So wildlife biologists or naturalists, they go out to nature, um, they find specimens and they do a scientific drawing and it's public published in books for general use. And the drawings are quite beautiful. Um, they look something like this. They're fairly ornate. Um, so the idea is that anybody now with this drawing could go and identify this plant, hopefully. <laughs> um, so for this project, I started by foraging species that were on the edge of urban space because I live in an urban area. Um, and I found that with the more species that I found and recognized and kind of put into my own itinerary, they became more illuminated to me in the general landscape when I was out. So I took what I could find and I pressed them and I scanned them. And then from that scan, I created the series of symbols and drawings, which has a similar aesthetic to um, a neon sign. So this is actually something I would have collected. This is just a close up. This is a scan. So I would have actually flattened this specimen and scanned it. And this is kind of what I ended up with when I put it back on paper. Um, and from this, these are the resulting symbols that I was creating or some of them. So you can actually see in this one um, on the right, the kind of blue one that has a lot of line density is incredibly similar to this sample that I found outside. Um, so these are typically projected in real space. And this is a still so I can show you more, more of them maybe with a little more detail. So in doing this, I was trying to see how uh, biodiversity that surrounds urban areas maybe could be better integrated into urban space or imagine how we might interact or understand the natural through a more digital lens that speaks more closely um, to our contemporary viewing habits, which is very digitized. Um, and this work you know, shows the intersections between drawing and video in terms of taking taxonomic drawings, but it also really points to the natural and digital where I'm really taking these organic samples and scanning them through a computer. Um, so this was something that I continued to work with, this convergence of the natural and digital in the next work that I'll go over. Um, so this work is titled Urban Light. So this piece is a fully functional, full-sized outdoor uh, SAD or SAD lamp. Um, a SAD lamp, seasonal effectance disorder lamp, is one of these. Um, people often use them at their desk, at their office, when they're indoors and they're just not exposed to enough light during the day. So these are meant to kind of sit with you and counterbalance the lack of light that you're not getting. Um, and it's supposed to synthesize the same kind of light that daylight is. So it's a full spectrum light. So it has all the colors in it. And pretty much anybody um, above this line on the earth is going to have um, the possibility of, of having seasonal effectance disorder. So this is just above the 30 degree line where you might report low mood during the winter. That's kind of what it means. Um, so in this work, having this installation as a fully functional outdoor sad lamp 
was making an object that was usually personalized and taking it out and making it for communal use. So in this, you didn't have to have your own. Um, it was on for a week or so, so you could walk and stop as you pleased. Um, and not only did it synthesize natural light, but it also created the space for a communal and shared experience. Um, this piece, Urban Light, was a piece that was a collaboration with another artist, Levi Glass. And when we were making it, we were thinking of how the design of an oversized um, sad lamp is meant to poke some fun at the Pacific Northwest, which has so much precipitation and so much cloud cover that to adapt to these conditions, we kind of utilize these devices. So it's a, like a bit of a communal joke about what you're willing to put up with when you're living here and kind of the challenging weather that you'll go through. Um, so I think in this piece, you can kind of see this linear development, although it's not a linear timeline from the other works that I showed you, because it also kind of pulls out these themes of the convergence of the digital and the natural. It's an appropriation of a digital object and it's meant to synthesize these en environmental conditions that are, you know, synthetic. Um, so these are the four works that I wanted to briefly run over to give more context on my practice and give more context to the exhibition Treading Lightly, um, which is available online through the Port Moody Arts Centre website. Um, and if there's any questions about my practice or my works, I'm happy to go to the Facebook comments and answer them. And also, um, I had a great time sharing this and having this as my first uh, online rendition of something since COVID began in the form of an artist talk is also a great way for me to adapt to this way of showing and take my practice and kind of move it more into the virtual space as we move forward. Yeah. Thank you, Gina. Um, actually, you know what, we have time that we can there, uh, go back and um, have a quick peek at the exhibition. Sure. So I'm just going to um, share uh, the screen again that had your digital exhibition on it. And uh, if, if you're okay, we can have a quick peek at it um, and then people will be able to have a look um, after on their own uh, time as well. Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, That's I would great. love to look into the cloud gazer video to give that one a little more context. That would be great. Yes, yes. And so um, when people arrive on the exhibition, then they can scroll through and uh, find out more about Gina and about her, uh, her thoughts on the exhibition and then have an opportunity to look at the various pieces. Now the uh, cloud gazer at this point, I only have the studio video on there of you speaking about it and I would play it, but I don't have <laughs> sound on my computer. I'm so sorry. But if people want to um, have a look, they can uh, watch the uh, studio video about the making of the cl of Cloud Gazer. It's very interesting. And then uh, Metallic is the piece that is actually currently in our exhibition, in our atrium on a monitor. It's playing back on the, in, on the monitor. And uh, this is, uh, I'll just show a brief uh, loop of what, did you want to just speak uh, briefly to uh, what, yeah. how, what this, how this works? Yeah, so this piece, um, similarly to some of my other works, is kind of based on genre drawing. So these forms are based on drawings of shifting crowds of people. So these are kind of the contours of how I would have drawn those people. Um, and in this piece, I was kind of looking uh, at these elements of the gestural sketch, like how there's always movement, it's very impermanent. So in this work, I took this really kind of glittery metallic texture and that's how I filled these forms in. Um, and in this 
rendition of it. It's on a television screen, but I've had other kind of renditions where it's been projected at full size. Um, and the glittering texture kind of adds to this impermanence or the fleetingness of the forms as they exit space. So in this case, they're exiting either side of a TV screen, which has been set up for the exhibition. Um, and there's been other points where they've actually exited components of a room and kind of slipped out of the seams of space. Um, so again, these are kind of meant to echo our own form. Uh, they're at a similar shape when they're projected at full scale. And they're making you a little self-aware because they kind of walk at some points or they beckon or they gesture at a viewer in this way where, you know, it almost feels like they're acting autonomously, like they have their own lifeline. Um, and in that way, they kind of speak to you and make you kind of self-aware of your position in space. Um, so this work was uh, quite the development because it did start with just these very, very small contour drawings again. And um, I was able to kind of take it to this full form animation. And it's something that I'm actually continuing to work on now in terms of having these forms that are very bodily and uncanny and they gesture. And that's kind of coming into my newer work now. Okay, so we will stop this one and move on to the next piece. Okay, so there's uh, images throughout and you've done a lovely studio video of this piece as well that is uh, really nice to be able to get the background on these pieces. Thank you very much for making them and including yeah. them. They really add to it. And this is this is the gallery installation image that we would have had if it could have been installed. Um, I'm very, very jealous that we weren't able to uh, have it, but I'm so grateful that you're able to be here, give us the artist talk, and that we're still able to do the uh, digital exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so speaking to this work briefly, I felt that it was, um, you know, fitting for the exhibition that like you said, would have been in the gallery space where I would have installed it there. Um, as like, I have these big forms that are cellular and they kind of similarly act in this autonomous way where they have an endless video feed and they kind of have the secular motion where when you're standing in front of it, you can really become transfixed in it. And when you're watching it and you're becoming transfixed, you know, these textures in the forms, they start to become even more realistic. And so kind of speaking back to the slideshow that I had just done, these textures were meant to be realistic at that point because I was really experimenting with the illusionary aspects of video and kind of seeing how far I could push it in these forms. Um, these works are portraits and they contain these small personal memories. Um, so these are individual portraits and these are, I think four of a series of um, about 10 that I've done. Um, and in this, I was also kind of pushing myself to see how complex I could make this animation. How many layers could it have? How much could it be separated in space? Um, and then uh, also the time span that it ran for. So this was kind of a, I guess, a leaping forward in the work I was making at the time. Okay, so we'll scroll down through the uh, close-up images of home. And you've done the studio video of that one as well. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the information about Gina. Mm -hmm. So um, Gina, that uh, thank you very much for uh, going through that with us. Um, my apologies for the mishap on the screen share there. I was trying to find the video for, um, for Cloud Gazer 
so mm -hmm. that I could uh, just quickly give it a run th uh, through because that would be uh, really good to see. So if you just give me a second here, I will um, get see if I can uh, get that one up for you. Okay. Um, let me, and I'll just quickly check if there are any questions on Facebook. We haven't got anything yet. I do have a question at the end. Um, uh, but uh, let me just go back to um, see if I can share this with you. Okay. And Um, so, so far, here we go. I will, there we go. Okay, now let's, no, it's not sharing the actual video. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this is Cloud Gazer as it's, uh, this is the installation that you set up for it um, so that uh, it would you we could show it moving. Yeah, so this is um, an installation that I actually redid fairly recently um, so that it could be part of the online exhibition for the Port Moody Center. Um, but it was also something that I installed for a live stream um, for another exhibition. And this was kind of the first time I had installed my 3D uh, sculptural works to be sent out um, as a live stream and kind of create this gallery atmosphere. Um, in this work, I was interested in kind of converging the same ideas where I was taking this very naturalistic texture and digitizing it um, and creating this kind of synthetic indoor um, cloud gazing experience. And in doing that, I was kind of looking at the intersections of our digital and our natural worlds or our perspective of our natural environment as we're kind of moving forward into the digital era. era. Um, in, in making this work, I was also interested in creating a space with these kind of converging shadows. I'm not sure if you can entirely see it here, but there's a large dark triangle behind the circle and then it kind of shines light out on either side. Um, so it was a very kind of meditative space where you could get lost in this image. Um, and that was something I also appreciated about being able to uh, install this work again. Um, I think that's, yeah, what I can touch on <laughs> at the moment. Okay, well, yeah. thank you. We're kind of getting a little more than, uh, a little more, bonus on the artist talk. So that's mm -hmm. really nice. Um, at this point, um, I don't see any questions on Facebook. But uh, what I wanted to ask is I know you are uh, continuing to work on new projects. And I just wondered if you were continuing to combine the natural and the digital and um, from your early works to now, you've evolved how you apply that. And I wonder how, if you're changing how these, uh, the digital and the natural are intersecting in your work. Yeah, I would say I, I am, I'm thinking more, you know, initially I started as a drawing major, I, that was my medium. And then as I transitioned into video, I started to more think through these sculptural forms where I was using these projections. So when I kind of imagine my new pieces now, I see them in that medium. That's how I think through concepts. And I think right now for me, projection is becoming this very useful illusionary tool where I can 
create these environments where um, they're familiar, but they're slightly changed where you could kind of negotiate our surroundings or our familiar surroundings with these new perspectives. Um, I do use a lot of environmental textures in my work and I think I'm going to continue doing that. And I think looking at the convergence of the digital and the natural is something that's definitely a theme in the new projects that I'm thinking up. Um, and then again, I think I'm also moving more toward sculptural forms and less toward animation. So in that last um, piece that I went through in the slideshow, um, that was a site specific sculpture and installation. And I think, yeah, I'm kind of moving from drawing to video to projection to now thinking more in sculptural terms. So I would say definitely going to keep exploring the natural and digital and maybe just through a more um, developed medium, yeah. So what, uh, what are your plans now? Um, I believe you have uh, something you're working towards for later in the year. Yeah, so I have a series of uh, exhibitions this fall. I have one at Archive Gallery um, this fall. And then I also have one at Exchanges Gallery in the new year. And both of those galleries are located in Victoria. Um, so those works are in progress. I'm not sure how much I want to speak to them yet, but they do follow this kind of similar theme. And if I were to um, finish them and put them at the end of the slideshow, I think you would see kind of the same trends um, coming out in my practice. Okay, well, thank you very much um, for um, being a part of this and for the artist talk. Um, I uh, always appreciate when the artists are able to uh, join us and be a part of um, a part of what's going on with their exhibition. The artist talks are really important. Um, at this point, I would uh, like to to um, say thank you to our guests for coming and that uh, we will be back um, in a few weeks. And uh, it uh, looks like we're at an end tonight. So thank you, Gina, and thank you to our guests. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for having me for this talk. It's been a great kind of addition to my practice to kind of be able to work in these more virtual ways as, as I move forward. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone.